Hello, my name is Hugh Denby. I was a projectionist uh, at the IMAX Theater in Victoria, BC. This is a training video I made uh, uh, for future projectionists. I was there for about 18 years and uh, I found sometimes a visual aid for new projectionists was quite helpful. So I apologize for the image quality. This was made long before YouTube existed and uh, before and I never intended it for this use, but thought it might be interesting to some. Um, so, you know, I'll just talk through uh, basically what I'm doing in the video. I didn't have any narration at the time, so I just kind of, you'll see my finger point at uh, different aspects as I'm loading the film. So it's mostly a, a point of view. That's me there back in 1999 or whatever it was. So here I'm at, at the uh, local projector control unit, uh, just selecting the next show, and um, then I'm going into the transport here to move the projector back so that I can unload the previous film and load the next film. So without boring you too much with my voice, I'll just try to talk about the actual points that I'm doing here. This was uh, a uh, sound system we used at the time, basically just could consisted of a CD player uh, with 3D CDs all synced together, uh, get, giving us our uh, complete sound in the theater. This was at this time actually already being phased out for uh, this system, which was an A1. It was a originally designed that A1 for uh, recording, but IMAX uh, configured it for playback for the theaters. I'm releasing uh, the tension arm on the take-up ladder from the previous film here. Walking around to the front, with the lens cap on. Put up. Opening up the, uh, the transport system, the film gate, input and output sprocket. Lifting the film straight out, and kind of walking it out and around the projector. And uh, manually screwing up the, the previous film. Uh, thing to remember: all this film that you see that I'm touching with my hands, this is all scrap film. It's either uh, scrap before the leader or uh, at the end of the film. So none none of the actual film that you see on the screen is touched. I'm putting on the uh, take up unit that uh, uh, feeds the. Uh, film onto the projector, okay. This is just a loop that uh, you make to uh, put around the, uh, the film to hold it together so it doesn't unscrew on you when you're moving it around or it's sitting idle. And this is, I call this a puck, this is I'm just showing where the key, keyway is. That'll take off that, uh, enables you to lift the, the old film off that you've used and uh, put it away and put another one on. These are uh, clamps or whatever you want to call them to hold the outside of the film as it's spinning on the uh, feed platter. And, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to load the film that we're about to play through the uh, take-up unit, turning the uh, feed unit, excuse me. It's been a while since I've been in the booth, and so I'm starting to forget all the terminology. It's uh, funny, you don't do something for a while, you can't forget. So I'm just carefully showing, this is a very slow, slow, uh, almost slow motion. Normally I've done this for a few years to do this quite quickly, but this is in order to help uh, somebody new see clear the record. So these are particle transfer rollers. They're unit, just sort of a sticky roller to help remove um, particles from the film before it goes through the projector. And that's a film flattener. The film flattener is actually where the focus plane of the film is. And it also, uh, so it holds the film flat in the uh, projection gate. And it uh, also enables that to go vertically up and down. If there's a bit of particles or dust in the picture, you can manually move that up and down and remove any uh, debris. 
and just blowing the, doing a quick blow with the compressor here and uh, sort of self explanatory Once again, this is just done so that uh, you projectionists can have a reference, take it home, look at it, and try to get it in their mind. That's uh, procedure. So uh, here's the rollers I'd cleaned earlier in the show before, and I'm just checking to make sure there isn't any water residue on them. So I put them there nice and clean. And then here's the film flattener that I had treated with some uh, rain, oh, I think we called it rain away, something you can use in your car windshield. We used it on here. It made it a little slippier and helped any debris not find a home. So I'm just giving it a quick polishing after it's dried. Showing where the start mark, start frame, the picture is. And, uh, very important that your uh, input and output pathway is absolute. Here I'm checking for my frame line. Input center, flattening the film against the rotor, and closing that guide, and setting my loop. This is a roll called a rolling loop system. Closing the, the uh, lens gate there. Once again, checking my frame line. Don't move it past. Closing that and closing this gate. Checking my frame. So manually ahead. Now I'm looking for the start frame. I'm going to put that right in front of the lens. And that will be the reference for your sound to sync to. You'll see this coming up. Now this is the A1 system. It's, as I said, originally it's a 24-channel recording system, but uh, it's been adapted by uh, IMAX for playback unit only. So I'm just setting a sound. You'll see it not quite come up to the start bar there, because that time there is where a trailer is going to be. And this is a, a dubber, and this is a 35 millimeter magnetic stripe uh, film stock used for playing back sound only. And here's our digital uh, CD players. And I'm just checking that I've got the right show up. And the time, check the time. <laughs> got the right show, initialize. And then I'm locking everything up. Everything's syncing up right now, referencing itself to the film. While that's doing its thing, I'm going to, uh, once again, check the frame line there. I'm going to feed the output side of the projector through all the rollers. Once again, I apologize for the poor image quality. Just uh, been a long time ago, but I don't remember what I used to film this or tape this. So this is the take up reel. I just feed it around, roll it manually, and usually I used to provide a fair amount of scrap at the uh, head of the film so that there's a bit of weight to this roll so you can pull it around carefully, making it a little easier to uh, load onto the take up reel. Sure, everything's nice and flat. Right. That's just showing that the arm is fully engaged. Checking the film, checking the pathway through the uh, feet. I always uh, 
I always suggest that using your finger and your hand when you're first starting to force your eyes to look at where you need to look. Don't jump ahead. As I said, this has been, uh, this is, I'm doing this in 2023 and this was probably recorded 20 years ago nearly. I'm forgetting a lot of things. <laughs> so, checking my sound, uh, which I got the right shows up. Got all my sound sources. So I got three sound sources. That one is the older feature sound source that we've now used. But as we still keep it in the uh, loop as a backup. Checking my uh, films, making sure everything's right. Now I'm looking, I'm going to advance, manually advance, and I'm watching everything. As you can see on the W, you can see the real move. I'm watching for all the uh, sound sources to uh, engage, make sure they're talking to the projector, which they are. Here I'm checking my frame line and my start frame. There's a reference where it was. Making sure everything is secure. It's properly done. Oh, good. It's not good. And don't forget to take the lens cap off. I'm back here. I see the two uh, little indicators that everything's, uh, the sound source are all locked up. Moving it to uh, transport, moving the projector ahead, and I'm looking for two little dark, one dark uh, indicator. The projector is in the play position. You'll see it come up there. It is there. Back to the main menu, checking the right show, right show, right show, right show. Right show. And everything's locked. Go. Time is one minute before show time. I got time to do one last visual check. Always take advantage of extra time, as I used to say, to make sure you've covered everything. Project your booth lights off, looking down at the audience, so I'm getting ready to go. Around my work light. I project and it's ready. Thanks and I'm calling the uh down the source, presetting the source sound for the Good feature. afternoon and welcome and to iMac Victoria. Before we get Usher's started, mic. I'd like to tell you a little bit about your iMac Spotlight. experience. In front of you is a screen that is six stories tall, making it the largest screen in BC. Behind you in the projection booth, the projector the size of a small car pulls six kilometers of film in front of a 15,000 watt I'll, uh, All this I'll be quiet now and let the rest of it play out. You may find this experience so realistic that you feel as if you're moving with the film. If this should happen, just close your eyes for a moment or two and the feeling should pass. If you do need to leave the theater for any reason, please do so using the lower right hand door. Once again, checking. Right. See a moment. Time, Always check. There is no recording or photography of any type during the film. At the end of the film, please stay in your seats until the house lights come up and I return with some extra instructions. Until then, sit back, relax, and enjoy the magic of IMAX. First up is the uh, trailer. Welcome to the Paris Valley Films. And there's the uh, trailer soundtrack, uh, Dubber movie. Check again that your film is playing properly. Uh, look for anything that could be wrong. Get used to sounds. You get used to what it should look like. Once again, that's the soundtrack for the trailer. 
one more two fighter to victory. Looking down at the time, you can't see it in this picture very well. I apologize. But it's telling me how much longer is left in the trailer. Air racers. Right there. The ultimate air show experience. And this is coming up. You can see that sound source coming up to its uh, start mark. Now playing at this IMAX theater. And I'm turning down the clipper sound. And setting the feature soundtrack level. Walking over to the dubber, taking that off remote, putting on local control. And checking my picture, we are now into the feature. Things looking good. Bouncing around here, a lot. just checking to see what my next film is, so that I can put up the trailer. All the features playing on this time slot. I'll put up the trailer for the next show. So they're already make use of my time. Taking this one off the dubber. Rewind. Walk over, check my sound source. Yeah, it's all locked. It looks healthy. And it's chugging along. Now I'm going to go wash those rollers. Just all these different names they came up with. But uh, yeah, clean those right away so they have time to dry. They've got an hour to dry before they need it again. So the second set. And I check my show. Once again, and I'll put I'm going to turn the sound down. This is uh, called a dubber unit, and it was originally designed actually for uh, uh, sound studios or recording sounds in a studio of some sort, but it was adapted for playback only by just changing virtually the head on this thing. So I'm looking, uh, I looked at the uh, start mark on uh, this playback 35 millimeter uh, magnetics film. There's no picture on this film, just sound. Checking it. Just gonna manually record it. There's the start mark. And I'm gonna push the clutch in, move it around, and move back and forth. Get that right over the playhead. Start mark. Zero the counter. Take the tension off the uh, motor. And they can sit there and wait. And go back and check my feature film. All's good. Thanks for watching.